Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And welcome to the extra time segment for Everton to Brighton 3. Everton lose another home game, another embarrassing result, another poor performance. It's starting to sound a bit like a broken record now, aren't we? Uh, I'm joined by Paul McAllister, getting straight into the nitty gritty of this one a lot. Went wrong. Or where to start with this? I mean, it just seems to go from one... It's one thing after another, isn't it? It's, it's very easy to know what went wrong. The manager just played a completely stupid, borderline, negligent team selection, negligent formation, negligent personnel in certain positions, and just negligent game management in, in terms of how he managed the game as it was going along. It, it's just the same old stuff, isn't it, with Benitez? Every week he finds a new way for us to throw more criticism at him. Valid criticism. I know some people um, in the media are turning around and making out like Evertonians are being over the top and are being unfair and we're just looking for things to moan about and we actually enjoy it when the team lose. You know, I think everyone yeah, knows think, what I'm talking about with that. Who you're referring to, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, but it's, yeah, every week Rafa Benitez just finds a way to make Evertonians dislike him even more and not believe in him even believe in him even less and give people absolutely fair valid criticism to hit him with I think the criticism has probably never been more valid than yesterday's game I think we've obviously there's loads of issues like the goals we conceded and tactics on poor individual displays but that team selection was absolutely ridiculous wasn't it like I mean there's it, obvious, it's obvious that Luca Dean's obviously fallen out with him and he won't play, but James Coleman left back. John Joe Kenny on the wing was it right wing, right midfield? I don't know. Like yeah. you can barely get it. You're scratching your head just looking at it, aren't you? Like two in the, two in the centre of midfield again. When every time we've done that this season, we've been destroyed in the midfield battle. I can't think of a single game where we played well with just two centre midfielders in there. All our results have come when we played three or when we switched to a three during a game. Even the games that we were behind, that we came in and what came back and won in, like Southampton and Burnley and Arsenal, all those games we won ended up winning them because we changed to a three in the middle of the match. Um, start with Coleman at left back, mate. I mean, in God's the fact name. that Dean wasn't, yeah. I mean, I felt sorry for Coleman in that sense because Coleman has got no business playing at left back. He never has done. I, I don't think he's ever played there. Over, over than yesterday, apart from his debut. He actually made his debut there and we got the 5 0 off Benfica. Yeah, when he was a kid. When and in, To be fair, in that scenario uh, back then, David Moyes put him there because he just literally didn't have the, man, the men. That was the, he was the only player who could bring on. We had an injury crisis at the time and he just kind of threw Seamus Coleman on. And I imagine he would have said to him, Look, don't worry what happens out there, son. Yeah, and it's, I'm not going to hold anything against you. you. I know I'm throwing you in there. The deep end here, just I'm, I've been hands are tired. Just go out there and do what you can for me. Because Benitez specifically chose to put Coleman there over other options. Not only a bona fide left back, one of the best bona fide left backs in Europe, if you use him properly, in Luca Dean. All that was, mate, that was that was Benitez, that was Rafa Benitez waving his willy around that. That's all that was was willy waving. That was Rafa Benitez, everyone, la- that was Rafa Benitez laughing God, in the faces insane. of our fans. That. Yeah, ego gone mad. Ego been allowed to run wild. Every I know you're all human. I don't care one bit. I know best. I'm going to do whatever I feel like, and there's nothing you can do about it. And just watch me because I know more than all you. Well, clearly you don't, mate. Because the, when you when you take that sort of attitude, you better deliver a result. And you didn't deliver a result. And you didn't even deliver what what could even pass as half a performance. You can. So no, that was just literally Rafa Benitez, Mister. Everyone's got to focus on the team and put the team first. That was Rafa Benitez going it. Doing the exact opposite of what he accused Luca Dean of doing, or what he says Luca Dean has to be doing, rather. He said that Luca Dean wasn't putting the team first, and that's why he came onto the, of the lineup the last few weeks. That was Rafa Benitez putting his ego first before anyone and cost the team and the, the supporters of what should have been, I thought, a routine three points. And a much needed three points. Oh, yeah, a much needed three points. And because I, I didn't think Brighton were all that good. I thought Brighton was just Brighton. They, they play some pretty stuff, but they're very wasteful. They don't um, they, they don't have much to offer in the final third. They, they can't really rip you open, a defence open, as long as everyone sort of concentrates. 
We got two, we got one goal just because we switched off. We got another goal from a corner because the defenders don't know what they're doing from zonal marking, and they just got a fair goal from a wonder hit. Didn't they? It's not like we were absolutely pulled apart, and it was you know swashbuckling football from them, like you, you'd expect from the likes of Man City or Liverpool, and when we conceded goals against them. It was, just bright, it was just Brighton doing what Brighton do. They'll knock the ball around, they'll play some pretty stuff, and if you make it easy for them, they'll fat put it in the net eventually. And that's what they did. And with that in mind, obviously you mentioned the third goal was good, but the first two, like, some serious errors where they're like the set pieces up again. Like, he's got to, I think, to be honest, he's got to go on set pieces alone, I think. That, oh, that, yeah. That's all for Marco Tilda, and he wasn't half as bad a manager as him. And then, I'm not. I'm not saying Marco Silva was amazing. Saying Marco Silva was still twice the manager that Rafa Benitez is. Mark, a lot people had a lot more time for Marco Silva because people genuinely thought Marco Silva was doing what he was doing because he genuinely believed it was going to work. Type thing. People had more time for Silva and didn't hold it against him as much because even though he wasn't good enough to manage Everton and it showed in the end. No one had any doubt that he was trying to do his best for Everton and he was trying to implement things that he thought would benefit Everton. That's not the case with Benitez. Everyone, some people are throwing around the age and shout, so he's doing it on purpose, blah, 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 blah. I don't subscribe to that, but I do believe he's sticking with certain tactics and certain people and certain decisions uh, that he keeps making in the same in the games that are costing us. He keeps doing all that purely to save his own face, save his own ego, because he doesn't want to admit he's wrong. Yeah, just because he doesn't want to hold his hands up and admit he's wrong. And he's done it everywhere he's gone. But the second, it's never that... his fault. He, he loves taking the credit and he will not take any of the blame for anything. When it was at Liverpool and he and he went south there, it was all Hicks and Gillette's fault. When it was at uh, when he was at Inter Milan, it was all the players' fault for not listening to him. Not, uh, for not basic, players who just won the treble, not wanting to hear that they're not good enough and they need to try harder. If I was a treble winning player, I wouldn't want to hear that either, mate. So you're stupid. It was Chelsea fans' fault that he, um, it was really toxic at Chelsea. That's what he, turned, he tried, turned around and tried to blame it on Chelsea fans at one point when they went through a bit of a bad run during his interim spell. It's all the fans' fault for being negative. Tried to blame it on the Real Madrid players, again, for not having them because they didn't buy into his stupid ways. The likes of Ronaldo and Benzema and Sergio Ramos, same players who went to the president and said, either kick this fellow out the door or wear hands and transfer requests in. It was all their fault. And again, it was all Mike Ashley's fault, the fact that he couldn't take Newcastle any further than what he did. It's it's yeah. never it's never his fault. It's always someone else. And whenever things go right, it's always him who's gonna have all the credit. He's just he's a raging egomaniac. And even if he was a good manager and getting results for him for us, Evertonians don't like people who think that they're the big I am. We never have. Even when Cooman was doing well in that initial first season when he got us up to seven from we we had a couple of good spells under him. We had uh, Fans never talked to him, even when things were, were good, or what would, or not necessarily good, but they weren't terrible. He was still in the top half most of that season. Fans never talked to Kuman either because he had this attitude of looking down his nose at people who disagreed with him and didn't let him have his way. And fans didn't take to him either. And it's the same reason fans got really put off by David Moyes in the final few years because, because people thought that David Moyes got a bit too comfortable and a bit too set in his ways. Fans got put off by that. We're not going to suffer a manager who is basically thinking that. It's he having like his way or the highway, he and he's got like nothing to back it up with. Yeah, we've had it before, like even like final year of Roberto Martinez, and you know sometimes Alan I feel Dice like he was, as well. Yeah, I feel like he was treating us fans as idiots, like we didn't have a clue. Allardyce, Allardyce was literally, Allardyce was literally laughing in the fans' faces, and I don't think he even mm. got Allardyce. It's a it's a big thing to say that I don't even think Allardyce was this disliked. And Allardyce was literally laughing at us when, when we were booing him off the pitch. Um, when we went to like the likes of Bailey and, and Watford, and his negativity was costing us games. And then as he was getting heckled, people were just like, uh, "I remember there was what I can't remember which one it was, but he literally walked off towards the tunnel because it was one of these like older stadiums where you don't go down the um, like the tunnels, not a pitch side. It, it was at um, like off in the corner of the ground, and you'd have to walk across the, the pitch in order to get there, and you've got to cross go, um, go past all the fans first. And it was after a bad defeat, and Allardyce literally looked at all the fans in the stand and started giggling because yeah. we were that angry. And even and, uh, that that tells you something. When it's even got we're even more angry at this fella than we were at Allardyce. Honestly, Allardyce did a better job here than this idiot's doing. You, you, you've got to be 
an absolute flaming arsehole of a person to be for Sam Allardyce to beat you in a popularity contest, honestly. And Benitez is that flaming arsehole of a person. Ridiculous. And you know, we'll try and like not completely just stick to bashing Benitez. We'll go on to like some of the players need to be ashamed of themselves as well. Do you know, like between Allardyce, you know, Benitez, and Chalotti, anyone like during the spells, some of these players have let down plenty of managers. And you know, regardless of whether they like the manager or not, they're still let them up down. Well, yeah, but we've been through this before. The players who just shouldn't be here and they still are here because of mistakes that were made above their level from managers and directors of football and owners. The likes of Holgate and Kenny, I don't know what they're doing in our team in 2022 when they weren't good enough in 2020. The likes of Michael Keane, who has never changed in all the time he's been at Everton. He has a good run of form for a bit, and he has a terrible run of form. And for me, the games where he's, he's basically making mistakes and costing us are always going to outnumber the games where he's saving us and winning us points. It's, he's always going to be bad more than he's good, and we should have been rid of him two years ago, but we gave him a new contract, I think. And he's still here starting games for us. We've got um, Seamus Coleman, who is... We've been saying it for a year and a half, haven't we, that he's passed it. And I don't blame him for yesterday. He didn't ask to get played at left-back. He, he probably knew himself that he had no business playing at left-back. But when he he's a player who isn't good enough to be in the Everton squad anymore, as far as I'm concerned. Never mind the 11. And never mind the 11 in a false, completely false position. So it's I don't think the players, any particular player, takes any individual um, blame for what happened yeah, yesterday. I, or I don't think we should signal any of them out. If we're going to single anyone out, it's the manager. Because the players, we know they're not good enough and we know they've got attitude problems, but it wasn't the players picking their own positions yesterday. Um, yesterday, It was all Rafa Benitez. Yeah, I mean, I'm still going to say that some of the players need to take more responsibility, though. I mean, I, I mean you, you speak about, like, if it's really as dire as it appears to be, you spoke of the likes of Ronaldo and Benzema going to the club president. Should some of our more senior players be doing that here? If it's no. as dire as, no. as it is? No, and I'll tell you why. Because none of those players have achieved anything. Have Ronaldo... The they don't have the credibility, I guess. No, they don't. Exactly. No, they don't. They, they shouldn't be doing that. Because who, at the end of the day, who the heck are they? They've not won anything for Everton. They've got no right to be puffing their chests out and going into the director of football or the owner and saying... You have a change this or I'm leaving. It's like, we'll, we'll, we'll leave then. Go on. We don't miss you. We don't know if that's what Luca Dean's done. That's what Benitez is making out like Luca Dean's done. But again, the reason Luca Dean didn't play yesterday was purely because Benitez wanted to show the world how big as Willie is. That's all it is. Like, yeah. Ronaldo, Ronaldo's got, when Ronaldo walks in with the trophies he's won and the records he's set and tells you either this changes or I'm off, you, you'd probably do It's the right thing probably to listen. When Sergio Ramos does that, you're probably best off listening. When Gareth Bale and Benzema do that, who've got loads of trophies and between them, you're probably better off listening. If someone like Michael Keane or, I don't know, um, Awobi or Jordan Pitford all walk in and start throwing demands around, it's like, yeah, I'd throw me coffee at them. That's what I mean, I think. And that's the point I'm trying to make, is that obviously Benitez is culpable for a lot of this, but some of the players, I think, the players are letdowns, regardless of whether there's an egomaniac in the dugout. The letdowns because they're allowed to be letdowns because nothing's expected of them. It does me head in whenever supporters get the blame for why the clubs in the state it's in. Oh, the fans are too negative. The atmosphere at Goodison's crap. We're too quick to get on people's back. And my, my retort to that has always been, you try getting up and making noise in the stadium then when you're watching a load of gutless, clueless rubbish players who don't care and are, and are just bothered about money. You try and get up and chant and chant and sing songs for these players and encourage them when you're seeing people giving away simple five-yard passes, making stupid mistakes, not even looking at the ball half the time or not even paying attention to a runner who's behind them or just standing still and play, playing people on sides constantly, which is what all our players tend to do, or missing easy chances or not even going off redders when you're meant to be a target man or not even knowing how to cross when you're meant to be a winger, or not even knowing how to make a simple through ball when you're meant to be a playmaker. You try getting up and supporting all this crap and get, getting an atmosphere going in the stadium when you're witnessing that. The players are allowed to be like that because the club itself is like that from the top. We've had this discussion loads of times. Until there's some expectation put on the play, uh, at the top of the club, 
then there won't be any expectation trickling down on the players. And if there's no expectation trickling down on the players, they're going to be as gutless as they like. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people are saying as a we as fans are supposed to be responsible for sort of making that happen. But like you say, we don't wield enough influence on the day to day. You don't. We're not. We're not like. We're not. We can help on a Saturday when we play for 90 minutes. We're not. That's all we can do. Yeah. If there's one thing you can say about Evertonians, it's that we're not fair with other fans. We're not supporters who only turn up when we're winning. We're selling out every away game we go to, even when they're in the middle of the week at the other end of the country. We're still selling out all our season tickets every se- every year, even though we're going backwards as a club and achieving absolutely nothing. Do you know what I mean? We're cheering players who haven't got an ounce of technical ability in them, but because they'll work hard, the likes of Niasse, the likes of Strachwellacy, the likes of... Um, what, what was his name? That's uh, Sidibe. You, you don't have to be a good footballer to get Evertonians to back yet and get behind yet. You've just got to look like you're bothered. We've had some absolutely shocking players come through the doors who didn't get any abuse because people knew they were trying and people knew that they were getting hung out to dry by certain other players who weren't try who weren't helping them on the pitch. It, it just it never it will never hold water with me that argument that the fans play a part in the club's fortunes being really but rubbish. It it just doesn't. You don't have to do hardly anything to get Evertonians to back you. All you've got to do is, one, look bothered, and two, put a bit of effort in. And if these players aren't even willing to do that, then they're in the wrong profession. Precisely. I mean, I can't put it any better than you've just done there, you know what I mean? I think... But... I think... You've nailed it there. Like we, we as fans can influence matters a bit on a Saturday. You know, we only play for ninety minutes, but we're not there on the training ground when you know it should be higher standards of preparations for games. I don't think that the standards are good we enough can, on the training we can make ground. A bit of no- I don't think we can make a bit of noise and maybe give you the confidence to try um, a risky pass or have a shot from distance. We can't go out there and make you run around and sweat. We can't go, make you go around and put a tackle in and try and win the ball back with all your, uh, your might. We can't go out there and make you track back and, uh, on a runner when the teams are getting it on the counter. We can't make you go up for an header, that, an header that's vital, whether it's an header in our box or the other box. We can't make you just even turn up because after our players don't, it's not only like they turn up, you're like ghosts, aren't they? You wouldn't even notice that they're not there. Do you know what I mean? Fans can only do so much and I will never blame any supporter who isn't having a whale of a time and isn't eager to stand up and start chanting when they're watching the likes of a Wobi who can't trap a bag of cement when they're watching the likes of Hot Mason Olgate who's 24, 25 and still plays like he's 15. I won't blame any supporter who gets who won't get up and cheer when Jordan Pickford can't save a long-range shot, it seems. I won't blame any supporter who goes mad when players like... Um, Michael Keane just can't oh, pay attention for more than five seconds to something. Do you know what I mean? It's not the supporters' fault, and it will never ever hold water with me. Evertonians will back the, the will, will get behind our team. We proved that by the way we buy the tickets and we turn up at no matter what stadium it is, no matter what day of the week it is. But we will not put up with shit. Or mm-hmm. I take that back. We will put up with shit as long as we know that shit is trying. Just we will not put up with non with people who make no effort, and rightly so. Oh, absolutely. I think, to be honest, I think we're one of the better fan beaters in terms of sort of levels of patience we've got. You know, I do, and I, I do because after people go mad saying, "Oh, we're so quick to turn on our players," we've got to make a boo boy out of everyone. It's like imagine any of these players played for the likes of Real Madrid or Barcelona or Bayern Munich or or um, even teams that aren't winning championships, the likes of Valencia. Valencia in in Spain are notoriously fickle. They'll boo you even if you're not if you're winning games, but you're not playing the style of football they like. They'll boo you in Real Madrid if you're not winning every game four 0 And even then, they still might do it if they don't like the fact that certain players are scoring and are not their favourites. Imagine some of these shitbags like um, a Wobi. Imagine he went to go play for some team in Spain as a, like an, um, a Real Sociedad. Do you know what I mean? It's not a team that is typically winning stuff, but they've got a very proud identity. They're very proud of who they are, and they're very very. Uh, they expect people to take their take their club and their well, city to heart. I think Nap- Sociedad Napoli, very, Sociedad, the very similar club to us. I think Napoli, what even stands for. Napoli, Napoli in Italy as well. These are clubs that don't expect to win leagues, don't expect to win trophies every season. All the expectors for players who come there to take the city and the club to heart and put a bit of effort in 
and not surrender and not just cower away like all these lot do. Imagine you went and golf and played for one of them in a in a country where fan violence and fan racism is a lot worse than it is in this country. Imagine you went over there, you wouldn't last two minutes. Put them in with the attitude you've got. Over there, the worst that you get to, the worst that will happen to you is you'll get called a swear word by some old man and you'll just drive home and you can lock and you can forget about it and go back to your mansion. In Italy or Spain, they'll throw stuff at you on the pitch. Or they'll call, a, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll a dead thrown on. Yeah, people, you've got a dead pig thrown on, they'll throw stuff at you on the pitch, they'll wait outside the park, the car park for you to drive home after the match, they'll camp outside your house. No, it's, well, that's what I mean, I think, compared to that, obviously, but I even think compared to other English fans, I think we're pretty, I think we're quite tolerant, I think we've put up with a lot of we're a very particular fan base. We've got particular things. There's, I don't think there's any fan base in England that's quite like us, or at least not one that I know of, in the sense that we we demand certain things, we put up with certain things, we won't put up with other things, and little things that probably wouldn't wouldn't even be a second thought in other fans' minds can play in our minds for ages. Just we're a very particular fan base, but we're not a hard fan base to win over. I think All you've got to do is just try. Does it just affect us more as fans? I think we're... we're... I know all fans are, but I feel like as a club, we're very dedicated to the club. Like I'm frustrated. Every every fan's dedicated, but we're we we've got a lot more frustration built up than a lot of other clubs have because a lot of other clubs who we consider are rivals, historical rivals, even if we're not like rivals with them nowadays, in terms of we're not like playing them in cup finals or in Europe or anything. Those clubs like your Tottenham's, your Chelsea's, your Liverpool's, your Arsenal's, your United's, they're winning trophies every couple of years or they're having really high league finishes. So there's still enough there. There's there's some hope for those those supporters. They haven't completely thrown the towel in yet or thrown the toys out the pram. And other clubs who are below us, the likes of West Ham or I mean below us in terms of just general history, in terms of club size and, and general pecking order. The look like your West Ham, your Leicesters, your um and maybe your Aston Villas, those clubs and haven't experienced any success for a long, long time, especially West Ham and the likes of Leicester. They weren't supporters who grew up winning trophies or are of a certain age where they've got relatives who remember the winning trophies and can tell them all about it. So just anything to them is a bonus. Whereas Evertonians, if you can't remember, if you're not old enough to remember us winning the trophy, you've probably got a relative or a friend who has, and you've probably watched all the documentaries about it and you're desperate to have that yourself. So you're not willing to just put your feet up and say, oh, well, if we lost this week, no big deal, because I wasn't expecting anything anyway, like a lot of these other clubs fans do. Yeah, I think another good point to make is for, like, you know, you mentioned Everton. The one thing that Everton haven't got that all those other clubs have, the clubs that, you know, say, particularly tend to finish below us, all those sides have been relegated, and while that's a bad thing, they've also achieved the promotion, even if it's not... Uh, even if it's even if they didn't win the title, they've been promoted, they've won a playoff or something. They've had a moment of glory, whether it's a promotion or you know, like a relic survival on the last day or, or something like or that. Or yeah. that, or a Johnston Paint trophy. Just like even anything, like just something to get the fans cheering, even if it's a, if it's at a much lower level. But, but their fans have had a reality check at some points. They've had They've, they've tasted what it's like to get relegated. They've tasted what it's like to be outside the top flight. They know what it's... They're just grateful to be back in the top flight, at least for the first few years that they are back. Do you know what I mean? Evertonians have never been relegated. Or there's no one alive who remembers us getting relegated. You don't know what uh, what that feeling is. So to us, we're still a club that wants that... A fan base that looks upwards rather than downwards. But I don't know how much longer that's going to be because we've been going backwards and backwards for so many years now. It's probably going to get to the point where we go back to where we were in the 90s, where... We're just grateful to survive every season when we don't look to achieve anything tangible. I think that, to be honest, begins this season. Unless, well, it's, it, it, certainly see, it's, it, it certainly seems that way amongst the people, the decision makers at the club. It seems like they're settling for that. Just as long as we don't get relegated, then it's sound. Which is when you think about it, it's utterly pathetic, isn't it? Like when you think yeah, about but, the investment. Yeah, but. I don't know what the answer is, mate. I really don't. If I did, then I'd, I'd be on. The, I'd be running down to Goodison, trying to break the doors in, begging someone to listen to me. If I had the answer. Yes, make sure. Before we finish, was there any positives from the game yesterday? Any good? 
Anthony Gordon, Anthony Gordon had his best career performance by a mile. He looked every bit a man. I thought he looked like a play, like a seasoned pro who'd been playing in the Premier League for years. Whereas in other games that he's played for us so far, even the ones where you'd say he did well, he still definitely looked like a youngster who was kind of finding his way and trying to um, compete constantly and and doing a bit and having a bit of an uphill battle at times. Whereas yesterday he looked, he didn't look uncomfortable at any point. He didn't. He looked like he'd been playing Premier League football for a long time, and he wasn't the least bit intimidated, or he wasn't the least bit um, over anxious, or he wasn't the least bit feeling like he didn't belong which is not always the case with young players his age who haven't got a lot of minutes. Because if he had all his minutes up for Everton, it's nowhere near as many as the likes of Mason Olgate at that age or the likes of um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin or the likes of um, even other players. Like, I think Kenny probably had more minutes. Um, at, how old's Gordon now? 21? 20, I think. 20, 21, yeah. Year, yeah, yeah 20, 21. There's a lot of players who've been at the club or are still at the club in the, over the last few years who broke into the team around the same time he, at that same age, who ended up probably because of needs must as well. It wasn't like they were good enough. That's why they, they stayed in the team. It was because there was no one else. But there were players who got more opportunities than he's had. And obviously, others didn't take them and didn't develop off them. Whereas Anthony Gordon looks like a player who is developing and getting better with every game he gets. So we just got to hope that he stays in the in the team now, the starting 11. I say it would keep him in the starting 11 for the foreseeable future and just hope that he keeps improving with every uh, game he gets. Definitely. Yeah, in terms of, we'll wrap it up there. In terms of the overall, it was a very disappointing day. Another, you know, we've got an FA Cup game next and then it's a long wait till the next league game. So how much longer do we give Rafa Benitez? Oh, he's going nowhere, mate. If I had it my way, he'd have, he'd have gone two, three weeks ago. A lot, most people would have had him gone before that, but he's going nowhere, mate. Not to the end of the season, at least. They wouldn't be signing players now if they I were making plans for after them. Honestly, I, there's managers out there who I'd like us to kind of scope out and maybe see if we can get them to come in in the summer. But I just don't think there's any chance that he's going to go before springtime at the earliest. If we, let's say we get where it's like March, April, and we're still down in. 16th, 17th, or God forbid, lower than that in the bottom three, then I think Mishiri's hand would be forced then and we would just bring in a caretaker to the end of the season and hope that we can get a, just a bit of a new manager bounce just to get us away from trouble. But as long as we're still lurking around, as long as we're still at least six, seven, eight points away from the bottom three, he's going nowhere, no matter how grim the football is. Dyer, when you think about it that way, I mean... God forbid. God forbid, mate. God forbid. It's but very, it's just it's reality that people are going to have to get used to. It's, it's until very, we're in until we're in absolute dire straits, and by dire straits, I mean like there's only a, a, like a couple of points between us and the relegation teams, and we're near the end of the season, and just every point counts. But basically, then he's not going anywhere. That that would is the only scenario where I see he goes before the end of the season if we're for, like. Three, four points off the bottom three with like well, five, six games to go, and we just need to win two or three just to be absolutely safe. And we decide that the best way to win those two or three is just by putting an interim in and hoping we get a little bit of a manager bounce. But if, if that doesn't come to pass, if we just trod, trod along and within 12, 13, 14, but we're still seven, eight, nine points away from the bottom three, no matter how grim it is, no matter how many games we lose, we're not going to sack them. Every unit, just yeah. Well, yeah, but guys, it's a tough one to take and try and try to like be as at least miserable as possible because you don't want to bring people's, people's nice down. At the end of the day, it is only football. No one's died, I think, but it's, you shouldn't let football results and the way your teams do and all, like dictate how you feel about your life in general. But we just got to say it as it is, haven't we? You can't let sit here and lie, can we? But I mean, Roberto Martin has. I mean, do you get him to do the analysis next week if we get these? I've seen people today wanting him brought back, which is just nonsensical. It tells you just how far, how bad it's got, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, to be fair and to be frank. Like, even we we go back to just playing really bored and football and finishing 11th and bottling it, winnable cup semi finals, because it's better than this. Well, it's, it's as bad as it's been for a while, I think. 
like I say, we'll try and be as articulate as possible. Apologies if we didn't get too deep into the tactics of it there, because it's tough when it's oh, depressing. I think there's a lot of it you block out of your mind, I find, when I've been doing these, I try and forget a lot of it happens. There's no point trying to examine it, is there? Because it was just nonsensical. It was lunacy. You can't, you can't I'm not a doctor. I can't examine someone who's an absolute head case, which is what Rafa Benitez is looking like. There you go. So, oh, bombshell. Yeah. We'll wrap it up, I think. Um, yeah, Everton, too bright for you guys. Thanks for tuning in and putting up with, with the misery. Uh, let us know what your opinion. Drop a comment, give this video a like, and subscribe for more content. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.